institutionalizing corporate governance as a tool for national economic development was the theme for the 2017 Society for Corporate Governance annual conference in Lagos. It brought together stakeholders in the corporate governance space in the country. Given the opening remarks, Professor Chris Ogbeche, who represented the chairman of the Society for Corporate Governance Nigeria, shared the essence of corporate governance to the society. The subject of corporate governance is something that is near to the hearts of all of us here, and that's why we're here. We have continued to reverberate across sectors and economies, and has been responsible for the growth of many organizations and economies. A broader knowledge, acceptance, and practice of the subject in our country will in turn translate to the healthier economic environment, which will attract investors, thus leading to faster national economic development. Many people and organizations still think that adapting good corporate governance practices will lead to increase in their cost and will also constitute obstacles to their growth. The good news is that adopting good corporate governance practices will build and strengthen accountability, transparency, integrity, credibility, and trust. This will lead to improve operational performance, build reputation, and attract new investors, even lower cost of capital. This has been proven. Director with the SCGN, Professor Fabian Ajogu, SAN, gave a brief insight into the state of corporate governance in Nigeria. Today we will be presenting the 2017 edition of the Corporate Governance Reporting in Nigeria, which highlights and examines various indices of corporate governance drive in its effort to create an environment of trust necessary for obtaining long-term investment, which is the reversal of what Arthur Levitt said. If we put good corporate governance, we can then expect long-term financing. The report deals with the dynamics of reporting of corporate governance, corporate sustainability reporting, and corporate governance reporting structure of those top 30 most capitalized com companies in Nigeria. We've taken that template from a man that I will soon be talking about. These insights are only some of the many ways through which the Society for Corporate Governors, Nigeria, promotes efforts with a view to avert the kind of corporate misconduct or disasters that occurred once, which tend to erode public trust in companies. This is crucial task that concerns firms, regulatory authorities, stakeholders, and organizations. As a society, we continue to lend our voice and support towards preserving proper reporting and disclosure by companies. In his presentation, keynote speaker Professor Mervyn King, formerly Justice of the Supreme Court of South Africa, highlighted the four outcomes for corporations and state-owned enterprises to adopt in effecting corporate governance. Every company operates with two things happening inside the company. You're making business judgment calls on a daily basis. None of us can get those right 10 out of 10. You're taking risk for reward, you're dealing with uncertain future events, Consequently, you need to be practicing quality governance. When you make that wrong business judgment, Paul, and you will, when you've practiced good governance, society accepts it. Society and your stakeholders accept that from time to time you will make a business judgment call error. But it's how you do it that's become important. So in looking at this and looking at how do we institutionalize, to use the language of the Society of Governments of Nigeria in the talk they've asked me to give today, 
How do we institutionalize basic good governance principles? Into governance, into municipalities, small companies, non-for-profit organizations. So the King Four Basics of development acronym ICROFT, so you never forget it. I is for intellectual honesty. That honest application of mind where you have to cross the self, S-E-L-F river. Leave behind self-interest and self-concern. Fighting to take this decision. Because maybe it'll turn out to be wrong and I'll be sued for damages by the company. Self-concern results in risk aversion. Bad for the Nigerian economy. You've got to cross that self-river and make decisions in the best interest of the incapacitated company that's dependent on your heart, mind, and so on. C is for competency and capacity. I've been asked to become a director of this company. I actually think I can add value to the decisions that it makes. I actually am sitting on five boards already. I don't have the capacity to actually apply myself. The board should do a due diligence on you, and you in turn must do a due diligence on the company. If the company is one that has a poor reputation in Lagos, don't join it. R is for responsibility. Your company must be and must be seen to be a responsible corporate citizen. Carrying on business in a manner that has a positive impact on those three dimensions. Highlights of the event was the unveiling of three new publications from the Society for Corporate Governance in Nigeria. Professor King speaks further on the prospects for corporate governance and national development. What I've suggested in my talk is that governance, the same as reporting and thinking strategically, has become outcomes-based in the world. Governance should also be governance should also be outcomes-based. And I've given you the four basic outcomes. So you can look at your own corporate governance codes and you've got one for pension funds, one. Well, I believe you should have basic principles which are applicable and you build them into everything. And you see if a government state-owned company is achieving those outcomes or a private company or an SOE. And you know, you'll know immediately if they're practicing quality governance or not. If there's not adequate and effective oversight, well, you know. If there's not effective leadership, you'll also know there's no governance oversight. There's no gov good corporate governance. So corporate governance is about quality. It's not setting out a whole lot of checklists, you know, and ticking boxes, because then it becomes mindless. A minister of government is a representative shareholder. He represents the citizens of Nigeria. He should make sure that he's making appointments to direct those companies, people who have the right skills and competency to add value to the decisions of those companies. Not appoint people who are just members of his political party. Patronage. Well, that's why we've got 16 basic principles in King 4 plus one. And the plus one is for pension funds and institutions that they should adopt the responsible investment principles. What's a responsible investment principle? And they must ask the question, what is the environmental, social, and governance in a company? How are they, how are they handling the impact of how the company makes its money on society and the environment? Have they done an integrated report? If not, why not? Have they got a supply chain code of conduct? If why, why not? Have they done a sustainability report? What is the value of their tangible assets, which are assets in, in a balance sheet according to financial reporting standards? What are their intangible assets? What value do they put on reputation, this, that, and the other? Add it up, it's different from the market value. Explain it. These are principles of responsible investment. So when a responsible asset manager, the asset owner, makes an investment, your trustee of your pension fund makes an investment in in a company on the, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, 
They don't only do a financial due diligence. Of course, I've shown you, I've demonstrated, it's only part of the story. So they've got to do a due diligence on, ask the question, what is the trust and confidence of this company in Lagos, in the community? What, and show us your controls and oversight. Are they adequate? Are they effective? Effective leadership, well, last year you did this and did that. That wasn't very effective. What happened? The company is a sovereign person on its own with its assets and liabilities. The shareholder is one of the stakeholders. They provide equity capital to get the business started. And then you can look, take any company on the Nigerian Stock Exchange or any small company. You'll find there's more debt than equity. Companies today run on borrowings for their provision of capital. So even more so, the shareholder who has no duty or responsibility to the company, once he's paid for his shares, he's got no duty or responsibility to the company. And when the company goes bankrupt, he's at the back of the queue. Creditors get paid first, suppliers get paid first, employees get paid, he's at the back of the queue. So this whole question for a hundred years, putting primacy on the shareholder, has resulted in wrong teaching to young lawyers and accountants and also it's resulted in a fixation with maximizing shareholder wealth instead of focusing on corporate health because you get that corporate health right it's in the long-term interest of the shareholders and all the stakeholders otherwise your company doesn't survive particularly in a resource deprived world one of the powerful quotes from Professor Mervyn King at the 2017 Society for Corporate Governance in Nigeria annual conference was, great companies have been built on integrity. You lose that, you lose everything. This therefore underscores the need for corporations and state-owned enterprises to embrace corporate governance, which is a catalyst for Nigeria's most cherished economic growth.